We're very happy to welcome Qualcomm's president, CEO, Cristiano Amon. It is wonderful to have you in the studio, sir. Thank you for your time. And I love that you stated at this investor event, we're no longer defined by a single end market and a single customer relationship. This is about diversification for you, right? Absolutely. Today's a great day for Qualcomm. I think this is our time. Uh, the, the overall industry is moving towards our technologies, creating incredible opportunities to diversify. We always been the company that's been driving the technology innovation cycle in mobile, but now as we're gonna get billions of devices connected across automotive, across the broader IoT, it's a great opportunity for Qualcomm to grow and diversify our customer base. We're at a stage where there's basically a chip in everything for the most part, and everything you buy. The investors were, had been concerned that, okay, you were too wedded to smartphones, that there was sort of this whole other universe here. When you make that transition, is it a transition or are you basically you have the technology, you have the expertise, and it's just a matter of just moving into a new market. Look, I, the reality is the speed of digital transformation of our industry is moving to our technology. What's unique about Qualcomm, we can diversify leveraging our one technology roadmap. And we finished this fiscal year 21 with $10 billion of non-handset revenue. If $10 billion doesn't do it for diversification, I don't know what does it. And, and with the real message is we used to be looking at a company in mobile. But now we have a 700 billion uh, addressable market. As mobile technologies go everywhere, it's one of the fastest growth of addressable market. And with that, that will drive the diversification of our revenues. Does it drive the bottom line and the diversification of profit as well? As you're thinking about the internet of things, this new metaverse, this new sort of connected world, can that be a higher margin business than a traditional smartphone business? Absolutely, there, there are many uh, drivers of margins. One of the things we did in this analyst day you know, about a year ago, uh, we will talk about the, the semiconductor business long-term operating margin profile about 20%. Today, we upgraded that to 30%, to 30 plus percent. And the reality as we get scale, that's secretive to margins because we leverage our one technology roadmap. But as we go to some other opportunities, they're part of the digital transformation, we can capture more of the value. So it's really an exciting diversification plan because we're investing to diversify, diversify while expanding margins. And that's a great story for our shareholders. Plenty of other CEOs sort of giving messages at your event, Mark Zuckerberg among them, of course, very much hooked on the metaverse, so much that they've rebranded their entire company. The Oculus hardware, the Snapdragon chip is within it. How quickly are you seeing that sort of rolled out? I think you were saying you sold 10 million units. Is that over the course of a year? I mean, how quickly are we getting that much VR in our, in our rooms, in our homes? Look, we're very optimistic about this because we actually invested early. It was very hard to create the technology that allow us to wear something and allow us to go digitally to, to be part of a, a connecting physical and digital spaces. That's why Snapdragon is in virtually every single device. There are 50 devices today about virtual reality or augmented reality. The reason we're very bullish on this, we believe that when you look at your phone today, the screen is really the limiting factor. There's so much more that you can do, but you're limited by the screen. And I can see a future when everybody will have a companion glasses that you're gonna wear, your smart glasses next to your smartphone. This opportunity could be as big as the smartphone itself. How are you moving towards that though? Because you're talking about a world that for a lot of people is still hard to envision. And I would think even some of your potential customers, some of your potential clients, maybe don't necessarily have that vision just yet. How do you move people towards that? Look, there's a simple way to describe this. And I'll, and I'll give you a little bit of a technology insight. Uh, the, the metaverse may be different for different companies. I, I believe the company Meta has one way to think about it, especially as their number one you know, asset is social and how people socialize it. If you go all the way to a different spectrum to the enterprise cloud, like Microsoft and the HoloLens, we've been working with Microsoft or HoloLens for more than one generation now. It's about the applications on the enterprise. You can enterprise, you can have access to training, you can do remote you know, oper operations or many things like that. So it will manifest itself in different ways. One thing is common, you're gonna need a device that is going to connect you in over, or superimpose images, and that's what we do. And I'll give you a little glimpse of a future. 
today we talk about collaboration a lot. I think Zoom became a verb in many languages. Yeah. And, and that's how we talk to other people right now. You can see a scenario, it's not that far away. It's no longer a technology barrier. You can be wearing a glass. You can render a person right in front of you. The glass can sense from your face, you know, what your facial expressions is, and render the in person on the other side. So just how we communicate, I can see an application for that. One of these days, I'll learn how to get on board with that. In the meantime, take us back to, as you're talking about this diversification into some of these other areas, while also maintaining the margins and the market share within the existing sort of home base, if you will, you think of Porter's five forces, right? The threat of competition, the threat of substitutes, the pricing power. How are you thinking about competition substitutes and the pricing power that you now have? Look, you have to start thinking at Qualcomm a little bit different. I think that conversation was very common associated with Qualcomm when companies will just look at Qualcomm in the mobile space. Uh -huh. And then you look at the mobile market, look at smartphones, and you think about it. How many customers do you have? How many of those customers are developing their own chips? You need to step back and look at the situation a little bit different now. In Hanset, we are growing in Android. It's one of the fastest growth opportunity for us. Uh, with, with new customers, like in China, Vivo, or Xiaomi. Xiaomi is now the number two OEM in the world. But then we create automotive, we have IoT. There's a whole new set of industries, new set of competitors. Yeah. So well, we're very uniquely positioned. Who, who, do you, who do you say is your primary competitor now? It's hard to pinpoint because I have different competitors in different end markets. I think what's unique about Qualcomm is we're now going to be everywhere. And uh, so I think the easiest way to, to, to answer the question is, is Qualcomm competing with everybody else now in the semiconductor space?